What a difference a year can indeed make, uh, not in the world, but indeed in politics. A lot can indeed change. This time last year, Boris Johnson was indeed at the very summit and peak, shall we say, of his his rise to success. He had, quote unquote, got Brexit done. His deal, his oven ready deal was seen as the bee's knees. All the Brexiteers were praising him from dawn until dusk. This was it. He had got Brexit done. We were finally, quote, out of the EU. We wouldn't have to suffer under the dreaded EU anymore. But of course, what a difference a year makes to where we are now. Johnson has slipped from that peak in less in well, in just about roughly a year, right down into the very doldrums where many of us are expecting him not to last long. And indeed, I, I, I think this is very much a case of it is not Johnson who is deciding when he will go or leave. It is now up to the party, the Tory party in particular. But just as we saw across the pond during the Trump years, the Republican Party had many, many moments where they could have reined Trump in or got rid of him, but they just chose not to. As much as uh, as as they, uh, you know, talked about not liking Trump again, same for the Tories at the moment, their inaction can almost be seen as a tacit endorsement of his very actions. Boris Johnson won them a massive majority, and through that massive majority, they have pushed through some very worrying and tr very troubling draconian bills, not least to say their terrible Brexit deal that is drastically affecting a whole swathe of our economy. But of course, now we look at successes. And of course, as before, we've talked about trust and Rishi before, and again, Rishi's got his own problems. Liz also has her own problems to deal with, namely trying to, quote unquote, get this Brexit deal finally done. And indeed, if she can somehow be seen to sorting this deal, then she would say her ascent to the heights of leadership shall almost be assured. But if she can't, then this will not only affect her leadership run, but could potentially torpedo it. So. As we've seen, she is desperate to get a deal done. But the question is, can she do it? Very much, very, very much doubtful. Uh, she is not, shall we say, as competent as at least her Twitter feed would have you believe she is. So let's go diving into find out what uh, I've just been going on in some of these talks. So before we do that, though, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one updation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So on with the show. So today's story comes from the Yorkshire bylines with the title of Truss's part in EU talks shows her desperation for a deal to be done. When Lord Frost resigned his position as the Brexit minister in December of 2021, many hoped for a change and tone of the approach to the EU-UK relations. Those hopes, however, were very quickly dashed when Liz Truss took over the role and, on top of her other ministerial responsibilities as Foreign Secretary of Minister for Women and Equalities. Truss made her intentions very quickly clear. She aimed to be the every bit as argumentative, provocative and bombastic as her predecessor. No doubt this will have delighted the Brexiteers in government, whose favour she is no doubt currying in her quest to become the next prime minister. Those hoping a new broom would sweep Brexit clean, not least the EU, were yet again to be disappointed, if not surprised. Another opportunity for a softer approach, a softer Brexit, apparently missed in the name of Brexit right-wing ideology. Truss made it clear that she was prepared to override parts of the Brexit agreement and was not uh, and was willing to trigger Article 16 if the Brexit talks failed. And to emphasise her point, her recent pinned tweet spoke of the importance of safeguarding peace in Northern Ireland. And this was a Telegraph article headlined, I will trigger Article 15, Article 16, sorry, if the EU does not cooperate. Trust said she would be presenting the constructive proposals in an event to try and reach a comprehensive solution. 
She described the issues as a myriad and manifest and pledged to work night and day to actually negotiate a situation. Quite how she will actually manage these extra hours with three ministerial posts and her constituents' concerns to worry about, she's never made absolutely clear. And of course, in response to Article 16 threat, the EU negotiator, Mar Sonovac, also warned that such a drastic step would indeed threaten the foundation of the entire deal. The EU ambassador to the UK, uh, John Alvelli Aldemera, said that the bloc was not surprised by the renewed threat, as we've heard this all before. And we're adding that the EU felt that it was not very helpful that we keep agitating this issue. He said that the two sides should try and focus to try and find solutions for the difficulties in the implementation of the protocol. Before meeting directly with the EU, Truss went first to meet with the Irish Foreign Minister, Simon Covey. The Irish government described the meeting with Covey as good and friendly. However, the UK government sources said that they would not be dropping the demands for further compromises from the EU. Those accommodations include the continued UK demand for the removal of the European Court of Justice for Jurisdiction. Kobe said that he would have been naive to expect Truss to try and take a different position from Lord Frost, but expressed his desire for a new start. Regarding the threat to trigger Article 16, Kobe said that this would lead to further tension and an undermining of trust. Both sides, he said, needed to start listening to each other and trying to find accommodation rather than creating standoff and using threatening languages. I think this is just not helpful. On Monday, Truss then met with Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, leader of the DUP, whose priority it is to end the checks on goods moving between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. Donaldson said that he, uh, that he had shown great patience and called on the UK government to make imminent progress in the negotiations. He has claimed that he has been reasonable, but said it was time for the government to act. If the EU are not prepared to agree on what is required, he said, then the government must take unilateral action. In response, Northern Ireland Secretary Brandon Lewis said that despite not setting the arbitrary timeframes on the talks, the issues needed to be resolved as quickly as possible. Sinn Féin leader Mary Lou Macdonald also spoke with Truss and, res uh, and responded to Donaldson's comments. Said, saying that political posturing of the DUP must not hold back progress, adding that stability and peace and jobs and prosperity must come first. Comments then made by the DUP should not be uh, considered in the context of Northern Ireland's forthcoming elections in May. And of course, according to Covley, the protocol would be a big part of that election. And the EU commissioner, uh, Marhead McGuinness, suggested that a solution to the protocol, protocol impasse must be found before we get into campaign mode for the assembly elections. Perhaps this is one area where Truss and Donaldson will find common ground, common ground, using the Brexit negotiations as indeed a platform for their own political ambitions. On Thursday evening, Truss then hosted a welcome dinner for Sovac at the, at the Foreign Secretary's country residence and the Shevling House. This was to be their face-to-first, face-to-face -face meeting ahead of the talks on Friday. Before the talks even began, Truss then claimed they would provide a reset opportunity and suggested that the EU had a clear responsibility to fix the problems. Following the constructive talks on Friday morning, the only outcome seemed to be that an agreement to actually meet again on the 24th of January for more intensive negotiations. Truss said that there is a deal to be done but added that if we do not make sufficient progress, we will have to look for an alternative. In a joint statement, Truss and Solvac said, the meeting took place in a cordial atmosphere. They agreed that officials would meet next week in an intensified talks and the principals would meet again on the January the 24th. We share a desire for a positive relationship between the EU and the UK underpinned by our shared belief in freedom and democracy. The negotiation of a Brexit deal with the EU may be a novel experience for Truss, but the EU are very old hands at this, and they are unlikely to have heard anything from the UK side that they haven't even heard that they haven't heard all before, and that they haven't anticipated, or that they don't have an answer to. Truss said, "She fellow, uh, she as fellow believers in liberty and democracy." We should be capable of reaching an agreement that delivers for Northern Ireland and allows us to unleash the full potential of our relationship. 
As Trade Secretary, she was ad apt at very signing international trade deals that replicate those we previously had with the EU as members. If she can do the same with the EU, that'll do nicely, thank you. But I'm not holding my breath. We are far more likely to see Truss trying to outdo her predecessor in the hard Brexit stakes and, tr and trying uh, then trying an actual softer, more compromising approach. After all, there's a much bigger prize she has her eye on. So overall, um, this is where we are. Nothing has changed. Yeah, Frost isn't there anymore, but now Truss is in charge and she is doing exactly the same stick exactly the same shit and there is no um let's let's go over something here the quote-unquote problems the problems here we are seeing is that the, it's the uk not following the implementation of this protocol and refusing to follow parts of it now why might that be well we have seen throughout all of last year that Irish businesses, especially those in Northern Ireland, have benefited greatly from remaining in the single market and customs union. Moreover, similar businesses, where they were based in Northern Ireland compared to anywhere else in the UK, have flourished compared to their other counterparts elsewhere in this country because they have been in a fantastic opportunity to take advantage of being in the single market and customs union. And they have not shied away from saying that time and time again throughout this year indeed indeed there was just been one in the financial times the london economic have all reported this saying how businesses in northern ireland have been taking advantage of being in this very good unique position and here's the thing brexiteers uh, and especially trust do not want to see businesses in northern ireland flourishing because they are in the single market and customs union because otherwise that raises serious questions to why on earth did we leave the single market and customs union? It doesn't make any sense. And of course, they don't want that because then you can look at Northern Ireland, how it is doing and compare businesses that are there to the rest of the UK and see the damage that is being physically done to these businesses. They don't want that. Hence why they are so desperate to try and get rid of this deal. But the thing is, this deal and putting a uh, again a border in the uh, in the Irish Sea between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK was the only way that you can actually solve this. Indeed, all the Brexiteers, indeed even Liz Truss, was on board with this when this was Boris Johnson's oven ready deal. Literally less than a year ago, this time last year, everyone was singing its praises. And yet, what is the solution to this? As of yet, we have not heard a single solution from Liz Truss or any Brexiteers how exactly you solve this problem without putting a hard border between the North of Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, to which we have said time and time again would break the Good Friday Agreement and lead to all kinds of trouble. There has not been a single agreeable solution the eu knows it and the eu has time and time again put proposals and the proposal on the table is again the northern ireland backstop but then that is a step too far for them which was obviously theresa may's position and of course now we have boris johnson which was again very similar but just slightly different well well we'll just put a border in the irish sea and it'll be fine of course this is where we are now. And as a result, these talks are going to be never, ever ending. Because as far as any Brexiteer is concerned and any government, especially Tory government, that wants to keep Brexiteers on side must be seen not to giving any ground to the EU whatsoever. While at the same time trying to fulfill their free market fundamentalist ideology. So as we can see, um, Liz Truss is indeed at a bit of a pickle because what we're going to see is exactly what we've seen all last year from Frost. As was said there, people were hoping for a new broom to try and sweep Brexit away, but all that we've essentially changed is we've put a new handle on the broom and it's exactly the same. So as always, 
Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all 